letting you guys know. All right, so <laughs> I got that on the recording just because I, I like talking about myself. So I don't know, whatever. All right, um, an army <laughs> captain. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. An army captain. There, there's, there's Mr. Tate. By the way, an army <laughs> captain wants to fire an artillery shell deep into the Emily's enemy's front. However, she knows, and I made it a she because my, believe it or not, my physics class is actually run by women at this point. I, I've only, I have three <laughs> female students. That, oh, nice. That's awesome. I've never actually had a, a class where I had all girls, and I just think that it's because girls are kind of awesome like that. But it's, the reason being is because a lot of you know boys take the engineering stuff, but I'm trying to encourage that girls do it because I think girls are can can you know the, yeah I'm trying to trying to balance out the genders in, in this in this in this uh, field. Anyway, however, she knows that there's a strong wind blowing at about h equals 50 meters that would blow her shells off course. I don't know why I put shields. Shells, of course. If her artillery fires shells with a muzzle velocity of V naught, what is the furthest she can fire with them going, without them going off course? This is actually kind of a hard physics problem to solve. You can see by the complicated looking answer. I mean, it looks intimidating, but don't be intimidated by it. R equals two V naught squared times the square root of two G H all over V naught times the square root of v naught squared minus 2gh all over v naught time or all divided by g now i'll leave it up to you what is that this is problem number three i skipped over i, I just look like this one looked like it was hard so i figured i'd i'd help you out with this idea cool all right so what I want you to do is I want you to plug in the numbers, but I didn't tell you what the V naught was. So what you should do is you should go online and look at for the muzzle velocity of a cannon and say, okay, this is the muzzle velocity I'm going to use, and then plug it in. Your answers will all be different because you might all choose different muzzle velocities, um, which tells me that you're not cheating, and that's good. And I'll just calculate out what the right answer is. But really what I want to do with you now is do the ever so difficult task of checking whether or not the units for this thing works out. Cool? So I'm going to record a video and I'm going to do this not calculating the numbers. Um, I think that you folks seem like you got PEMDAS down. Um, but I'm going to check the units because that's a new thing that, you know, Emily, I got a question, Emily. You said you took physics before. Did your teacher yeah. make you check the units and everything? No. Well, see right there. Boom, you're learning something new. That's cool. Um, this is an important part. And the reason why I'm making you do this is because I'm trying to teach you to think like a scientist. All students of science should be able to you know, pay attention to the detail regardless of whatever um, subject you're doing. I want to make sure that you can check the units on this thing. So let's look at it. Cool? Let's not shy away from it. Let's, 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 you know, I was going to say man up, but that wouldn't be appropriate here. Let's, let's, let's do it. All right. What's the equations for the number two? Or what's the units for number two? None. None. Good. What's the units for V naught? Exactly, but it's v naught squared, so therefore it's meters squared per second squared. Do you agree? Yeah. I'm gonna multiply that sucker by something big. The square root. What's the units for the number two? What's the units for number two? What is that? None. None. What's the units for g? Good. What's the units for h? Exactly. Mm -hmm. There we go. What's the units for V naught? No, not meters squared per second squared. It's just meters per second. It's not. There's not V naught squared. It's uh -huh. just V naught. Come on, Mr. Tate. <laughs> Your hands in the way. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> excuses, excuses. Got it. All right. Let's do the brush and um, let's go through this one. What's the units for V naught squared? 
Meters squared per second squared, because I'm squaring it, minus no units times meters per second squared times a meter, all divided by meters per second. Do you, uh, did I lose anyone just yet? You see, I'm just taking this and putting it in slowly, one piece at a time. What's the units for G is meters per second squared. Agreed? Yes. Now watch how this all collapses, and it actually makes it really awesome. Okay, so check this out. Let's deal with, all right, so we got meters squared per second squared times, let's deal with this. What is this thing right here? What does that become? Meters squared or one second squared. Right, and if I take the square root of that, then that becomes a meters per second divided by meters per second. Do you agree? Right, that cancels itself out. I'm fine with that. Let's do the last the last parentheses. What is this right here? Meter squared over second squared. Meter squared over second squared. If I take the square root of that, it will be just a meters per second divided by meters per second. Emily, did I did I lose you? Uh, Are you good? No, no, don't worry. I'm recording this on YouTube. You can put it. Uh, you can play it. Pause it. You can even, you know, like. Watch my pretty face in slow mo if you want. Anyway, um, those cancel out. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So really, on the numerator side, I only have meters squared per second squared, and the denominators I have a meters time meters per second squared. Do you agree? Yeah. All right. So now we got ourselves a fraction over a fraction. We take the fraction on the bottom, flip them on its head, and multiply them. So I got a meters per second squared yeah. times a second squared over meters. This cancels out with that. I got two meters on top, and one meter on bottom. The answer is in meters. So I'll plug in my numbers, blah, 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 and I get something, something, something meters, which is what the range should be in anyway. So therefore, if I did this problem in a, as a physics equation and who knows, I might even give you this as a physics problem to do, and you actually have to come up with that answer by yourself. If I gave it to you, you can tell me, I am pretty sure that that's the correct answer because the units all worked out. Even if it looks ugly as sin, the units all worked out, and so therefore I'm pretty confident in my answer. I'll show you other techniques called data analysis and other things to to you know verify whether or not you get the right answer isn't that pretty cool that you actually get to take do a science that you get the right answer and you don't have to look up in a book or memorize an equate or memorize like a, a a genome or whatever to know whether or not you got the right answer you can check it with a calculator and check it with the units and check it with your brain no offense <laughs> hey genomes are pretty cool he's, he's a biology guy so. i actually suck at biology. Molecular I haven't even I haven't taken biology in college. So this guy knows what he's talking about. I don't know what I'm I don't, I, I'm I'm a physicist. So anyway, what's what are you guys thoughts? You, you guys like that? Is your is everything okay with you guys? Yeah. So I didn't actually solve the problem for you, but I do want you to put write down something like this so that you can um, show me that you know how the units work out. And I know that I did it really quickly for you. What I would recommend is watching the video again and writing it down step by step. If you get confused, pause it and process it for yourself. Make sure that you understand what I'm talking about instead of me just doing the hand wavy explanation. Um, I like that. Oh, yeah. It just kind of falls out in the end, huh? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're going to find that happen a lot in physics. And one of the things that you're going to find, if you learn how to do this technique, you're going to apply this to chemistry, you're going to apply this to upper levels of biology, um, those guys they know they actually know a lot of the math you know what I mean you're going to you're gonna find that hey if I accidentally had a square there 
the equation wouldn't work out and so therefore I know that I made a mistake and then you go through it with a fine tooth comb and you make sure oh oops I accidentally added one too many v naughts you know what I mean so this mm -hmm. technique is the reason why I'm teaching you this technique is not to g give you extra work it's to actually make your work easier believe it or not all right anyway um, I pretty much the rest of the the um, the homework is pretty much just doing more of that. In fact, I even have one where I say, "Hey, I have an answer, and then my answer is supposed to be in meters, and I have these three different equations that I came up with. Which one was the right one?" And so you can use unit analysis to say, "Oh, well, the only one that has units that work is you know A, B, or C." So you see how what I'm doing is I'm trying to train you into thinking or into how to check your work and to make sure that you pay attention to all these small little details that could kill you in the end if you don't do it right. We good? Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you later. Your homework is going to be due. I'm not sure exactly when. I don't remember. I think it was Monday or whatever. But um, have fun. Give me a call if you guys need any help. Talk to you later. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Alright, so I'm going to control F10. Shift F10.